with Tia, and I am Tia Woodward. Thank you for joining me today. Today I am going to be demonstrating three cards using the Ringed with Nature bundle from Stampin' Up. Uh, this is a fun bundle. This bundle has a hybrid embossing folder, which is a little different. So what that means is it does some embossing and it does some cutting at the same time. There's actually a, a die that fits inside the embossing folder and you can emboss and die cut at the same time. So that's really cool. So this is a photopolymer stamp set and um, I can't wait to share it with you. I think we're going to have a little bit of fun. Uh, a couple of things to mention ahead of time, just to let you know that Stampin' Up! has a couple of promotions going on right now. One of those is um, called Perfect Partners. There are six stamp sets that already existed in either the annual catalog or in the mini catalog, and those did not have dies with them. But for the month of September, there are coordinating dies that go with them. And you can find those by going to stampinup.com and select new in the menu. And then in the drop down, you would uh, find the words perfect partners. So that's how you will find those. There's six, six stamp sets. Mine hasn't arrived yet. Um, I'm not sure why. <laughs> the tracking number um, says that it hasn't been picked up yet, but I have an email from Stampin' Up! saying that it was shipped six days ago. So um, I'm sure it'll show up here soon. It was, that's a really unusual situation. I'm sure it's just a glitch in probably USPS system. Anyway, um, anyway, I'm excited to get that. Uh, the other promotion is during the month of September, Stampin' Up! is having what's called weekly deals. Those weekly deals, um, last week there were 12. This week there's a total of 23. Some of those from last week carried over to this week, and then there's a whole bunch of new ones. So um, that's exciting, and how you find that is you go to stampinup.com, and you, along the top bar, you find the word specials and click on that and a drop down menu will show up and you will see September weekly deals. You open that and they all show up. So you want to check that out. Uh, there's some things that are 10% off. I noticed some things were 20% off and I think there were, I didn't actually do the calculation, but I was eyeballing and it looked like there were even a couple that were more than 20% off. So go on there. There's some note cards. Um, I ordered last week. I, they haven't arrived yet, but I am expecting them over the next couple of days. I ordered the craft paper note cards in envelopes. I'm super excited to get those. I love the quality of that paper. Um, at this time I noticed, oh, I can't remember the name of it. There's another, there was another set of um, note cards in envelopes. I know what they coordinate with, but I can't remember the name of the product. Anyway, um, those are on there. One of my favorite open weave ribbons, the Fresh Freesia was on there. Um, Pale Papaya was on there last week. I think it's still on there. Anyway, go check it out. The weekly deals, there's 23 of them. And I would absolutely love it if you would pick me as your demonstrator. Um, at the end of this video, when I update the description, I will be including the um, current host code, or you'll see that when I turn the camera down, which I'm gonna do right now so that we can get started. All right, so turning the camera down and doing this as gently as possible. Sorry, y'all, I have very manual setup here. And I'm just double checking to make sure my phone is clicked into place. It is. So here's the, move this chair out of the way. So here are the pieces that we're working with today. We're working with Ringed with Nature. It's a photopolymer stamp set. Some of the pieces are missing because I've already got them over here on their blocks. 
but you can see we've got some, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, so there are six sentiments. And then we've got acorns or mushrooms, there's a house, there's some wood, there's poinsettias, there's some greenery, there's some flowers. So there's some nice things here. Then here is the embossing folder. Uh, one of the projects that you will see, the very first one, you'll see that I've used this with the dies. Um, and then later on, the second project, you will see that I use just this without the dies. And the third project uses the two of them together. So how that works. Now, I have pre-die cut just everything that I possibly could to um, speed things up a bit. Uh, I am having to do a little bit of fussy cutting in this presentation. So see, can you see how that die fit in there? So you would put your paper in here, that die fits into that location, and it will cut out all of these rings. Now I've actually done it so that I've cut out these rings in one color, and then there's another one that I applied ink to the inside of this folder. So where it says Stampin' Up, that's the face side. I've applied ink da, 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 to the face there. I've put the die in place. I've, I've put my paper on top. There we go. Closed it up ran it through the die cut machine, and I ended up with actual rings stamped right on my die cut piece. Uh, oh, so, excuse me. So yes, this originally in the this cream color was this size, and then I used these smaller rings to die cut them out um, to the smaller size so that I could have a bark piece as well as the inner rings. So that's how I got that. All right, so that's an explanation of what I've done. And in the dies, you'll see that there are, let's see, what are there? I'm looking to see if any of these dies, none of these dies cut out what you see here. There are some mushrooms, but the mushrooms don't line up. And there is some greenery, but the greenery does not line up. So these are detailed dies. So I have everything that needed a die today, I have already die cut. Now I'm gonna have to do some fussy cutting. So that's why I wanna get started right away. And just set these aside. In this first card, our card base is five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter. I'm gonna go ahead and burnish. Ooh, knocked over my glue. I am going to burnish. Oh, with evidently I've grabbed my absolute dirtiest bone folder. It's stained, it's not dirty. Okay, nice sharp crease. My card front is basic white. It's four and a quarter, or excuse me, it's four by five and a quarter. Then I have used my stitched rectangle dies to create this frame out of early espresso. And I have, after I cut the frame, so I used two dies, I used I think it was the second to largest. Yep, second to largest and then the fourth to largest to cut out the inside. And I taped those in place so that I got a nice even shape and I um, then put it through the embossing folder. And the embossing folder that I used is the timber embossing folder so it's got this wood grain look because on this this um i'm only using one of the wood rings 
and I wanted a little bit more wood influence. Oh, I'm gonna take a little sip of water. <coughs> so, <clears throat> so I used that embossing folder. That is the only place that I've used this embossing folder and the only place that I've used these rectangle dies. So I'm gonna set these to one side. Now, I am going to, so I already explained how I am going to have a cough again. I've already explained, <clears throat> sorry, I'm going to put a cough drop in. <coughs> I think I'm holding my breath while I'm talking. Okay. I've already explained how I'm making um, this wood wood piece. I already showed you the two different methods for doing that. I'm going to go ahead and adhere these lighter rings. Ooh, a little bit too much. To the larger ring. Let that set while I stamp and fussy cut a house that's going to kind of sit on top of it. So this is going to sit in the background a little bit. I haven't figured out um, the exact location, but I'm going to have a house sitting on top of that and some poinsettias across the front. So, And then lots of greenery. The one thing that you'll see in all of all three of my cards is that I'm using some form of early espresso in some form of this greenery, which was cut out of garden green cardstock. So here's my scrap piece of paper looking for my Here it is. Oh, isn't it? that's the dirty one, but that's okay. We're gonna go ahead and go with it. Um, I like to stamp on my piercing mat. I am going to use Cherry Cobbler to stamp three of these poinsettias. That's not, well, we're going to roll with it. There we go. That's better. I'm actually okay with these all turning out slightly different saturations. Okay, so I'm going to use those three. Mm. I might just stamp one more. I can grab another piece of white to stamp my house if I need to. There we go. Okay, I like those three. That'll be fine. Clean off my stamp before I set it aside. Let's see, and then I need to stamp a couple of sets of berries. So I use cherry cobbler for the poinsettias. I'm using real red for the berries. Those are beautiful. Note to self to re-ink that cherry cobbler. And then, getting into my handy dandy bag of scraps here, and pulling out a piece for stamping that house. So 
So the base of the house is going to be soft suede. I might have to stamp this off, but we'll see. Ooh, I actually like it. Uh, I am going to stamp it again, though, because I ended up with a little flubby right under that window. Actually, it'd probably be hidden by one of the poinsettias, but... There we go. That'll give me two opportunities to get the uh, roof on straight. I'm going to use early espresso for the roof. <clears throat> been kind of it so normally I make up all my cards ahead of time I've had these designed but I didn't get them made up which I will explain momentarily Ooh, that looks sharp I think I'm just gonna go with that I, um, so I have this handy dandy sketchbook and I sketch out everything ahead of time, um, some generic designs of what I'm doing. And I even call out like what's going to be die cut, what's going to be stamped, what's going to be what. Well, the last couple of days, my husband and I've been scrambling. We leave tomorrow for vacation and where we were going to go has an air quality issue because of wildfires. So we had to do a lot of uh, last second changing of things and it was harder than you might think. So I am gonna fussy cut. We uh, we had all different kinds of possibilities of where we might go and what we might do. We couldn't get hotel reservations anywhere. So anyway, we did finally end up last night. We did end up with reservations at, at our favorite beach, which we've already been to once this year, but it's okay. It's our favorite beach, and we're going to love it. We did end up, so normally we get a room that has a kitchen in it. We couldn't. So darn it, we're going to have to go on vacation and eat out. <laughs> normally I do this all in one fluid movement, but as you can see, there's a lot of um, straight lines. If I can get this under here. Yeah, we looked at the mountains. We looked at, we one of our backup places that we absolutely love, we're going to in a couple of weeks. So that kind of was taken out of the mix. Lake Chelan. So anyway, our hearts go out to everybody that's dealing with wildfires. It's, um, here I am talking about fluffy things like vacation and the hardships of rescheduling, but that's nothing compared to what those people with, that are dealing with the wildfires. So our hearts go out to them. All right, my house looks fine. I do want to soften that little roof edge right there. There we go. All right. So there's our house. And going to cut these apart just to make it a little bit easier. So anyway, normally I make up my cards in advance and that just was not an option this time and today got kind of busy 
actually going to pull my hair back. It's starting to get warm in here. All right. And don't need to be exact here. I did try to pick shapes that weren't going to be that hard to fussy cut. I really, really just had this idea of this house sitting kind of behind these poinsettias. So let's see, what else can I tell you? I sent out my newsletter last night. If my newsletter is something that you would like to receive, um, in the description after this video, there will be a link to all of the links that are stamped with Tia. Including a link to sign up for my newsletter. So if you would like to receive that to your inbox, and you know, some people are like, I don't want one more email. I get it. I totally get it. Um, what I would point out is that on social media, we don't always see things right away, like as soon as things post. And so like for these weekly deals that I'm sending out in the newsletters right now, if, if you aren't receiving this directly, you might not get notification in a timely manner. So I'm, and I'm just, I'm just saying, um, uh, kind of a harsh, uh, rem um, example of that is this last weekend, my husband and I were going about our business and I opened up Facebook and it was a friend's birthday. So I went on to their page to leave a message. And there were all these messages from a month ago that this friend had passed away. And I had no idea. I mean, obviously not somebody that I deal with on a regular basis, but it was somebody that I cared very much about. And I'm horrified that I didn't know um, anyway, evidently had been announced on social media and I never saw it in my feed. So if you want to know about something like a sale, if that matters to you, you might consider signing up for the newsletter. This last weekend was fun. My um, my husband doesn't always, oops, I messed that up just a little bit. My husband doesn't always get to take the three day weekend off. Monday is usually a required work day and, and then they get comped that day. Well, he took it this time and that made me really happy. Anyway, and I worked on refinishing an old family desk or a table. It's the desk that I use in here. So that was a lot of fun. The weather was not too hot, which was awesome. Evidently we have hot weather coming back, which is not helpful to those people that are dealing with the wildfires. Let's see, what else can I tell you? Those perfect partners are, the, that promotion is really, really cool. You know, I was just telling somebody else this story and I think I might just go ahead and share it with you too. Uh, this is not related to the perfect partners, but um, related to, there's a, we have a Stampin' Up 
the annual convention is in November. And back when I joined Stampin' Up! So I ended up joining at the um, August 27th of 2019. And I had been asked if I wanted to join Stampin' Up! I'd been buying the products for a couple of months. I, I was pretty new to stamping. And I, when I was asked if I wanted to join for the discount, I kept saying no, 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 no. But what got me was that there was going to be a convention. I found out that there was going to be a convention. And my friends that stamped were going, that, that were demonstrators, or they weren't running, they're demonstrators, but they weren't, you know, business demonstrators. They were hobby demonstrators. Anyway, but they were going to this convention, and they were super excited about it. And I wanted to go, but the only way to go <laughs> was to join Stampin' Up. You couldn't, you can't go unless you actually are signed up. So I signed up <laughs> just so that I could go to the convention. And I thought, yeah, you know, if I don't like it, I will quit. Because that's a thing. People do that. Well, I signed up in time. I went to the convention. I loved it and loved the speakers. It's it's so uplifting and everybody lifts each other up. Um, it's not just the people, you know, that run the business that are doing super well and blah, blah, blah. It's truly everybody lifts each other up and it was amazing. And I thought, oh my gosh, these are my people. These are who I want to belong to. The reason I'm telling you that is we have um, another convention coming up. So we have one every year. And this year, so I live in Vancouver, Washington in the United States. And the closest one, they have a bunch of local um, conventions across the United States. I think there's five or six locations. But in my case, the closest one is Vancouver, BC. So I'm going to drive up to Vancouver, BC for my, my convention. And um, the person I was talking to a couple hours ago, she didn't realize any of that. That was all news to her. And so I thought, you know what, maybe I'll just go ahead and share that with you all. Is, um, you know, it's more than just, you know, being a demonstrator. When you sign up, you get the title of demonstrator, whether or not you choose to run it as a business. You don't have to, but um, you are then referred to as a demonstrator. Anyway. You know, it's <laughs> it's not just about making money or um, you don't have to. I mean, matter of fact, the two people that are my downline, my team, were the paper blessings. Um, neither one of them run a business. I'm the only one who does. And even then, that was a surprise to me that I was going to do that because I joined... To be a hobby demonstrator. I joined for the discount and to go to that <laughs> convention. And then uh, a friend of mine, a co-worker, now a friend, but then a co-worker, she found out that I had joined Dam uh, Stampin' Up! And she was like, oh my gosh, I need to have a party. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to do a party. But I did. And I fell in love with it. I'm so grateful that she wanted a party because if I had not done that, I don't know that I would know that I love doing this and that I love teaching other people how to do this. And I wouldn't have joined this amazing group of people that all share and inspire each other and uplift each other. Anyway, I just wanted to share that little bit of information while I fussy cutted and hopefully made that less painful for people that hate fussy cutting. Just got two little items left here to cut. And then I can assemble this card. And this one is gonna be fussy cut a little bit different, I think. But yeah, if you've been, if you've wanted to join for the discount, but you've been scared to do that, Man, let me know, um, and I'd be glad to talk to you about whatever concerns you've got. 
because <laughs> this is way this is way more than just saving money. This is okay, evidently something has happened in the news because my text box is blowing up. I'm not going to look, but evidently something has happened. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. If you have any concerns or if you've had any thoughts and you want to know more, please, please ask me. Because I have an awesome team of lovely, lovely ladies. And I would love to have you join. And one more, and then I'll be done fussy cutting. I think, um, I think the next card, there's only one item to fussy cut. And it's a house, so it's not bad. Let's see, what else can I tell you about? So the I told you about Perfect Partners. I'm trying to remember what stamp sets were in, were in there, and if I could, rem I can remember what they look like. I just can't re necessarily remember the names, so I don't want to mess that up. But it's in my newsletter. It's also on my Facebook page. It's been advertised. Almost there. Almost there. Okay. There we go. Move all of this aside. I do have one more thing to stamp, but um, it, which is the sentiment, but I'll do that after I assemble the front of the card. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this frame to the card front. And I am going to do that using dimensionals. <clears throat> Excuse me, using dimensionals. <laughs> I'm knocked over my glue again. Let me see if I can make these fit. If not, I'll have to go to the smaller ones. Nope, gonna have to go to the smaller ones. And make sure. So it's gonna take a few more. going to be nice for my husband and I to go on this vacation. So uh, as most of you that watch me regularly know, my husband and I are into uh, vintage boat racing. We pit crew and have an enormous group of friends in that hobby. But we try, it's, and that takes up a lot of summer. But we try very, very hard to make sure we go and do at least one vacation that is not boat racing related. I'm trying to keep balance, you know. Using my take your pick tool to take the backs off. can't sometimes with these little ones it's harder for me to see that I've taken the back off
All right. I will now, can you see that wood grain on there? Isn't that beautiful? I love it. Okay. I'm going to try Try to center this on here. There we go. That's good. Then I may or may not leave this piece of wood in here. I'm going to have poinsettias across the front. This. The house is kind of going to nestle. I'm just laying it out real quick. going to go together super fast once I figure out my layout. I'm tempted not to put that piece of wood in there. Or just squish it down in there maybe a bit. Maybe like that. So my sentiment is going to be on here. That could look good. All right. So now I think I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to apply adhesive here and I'm gonna set this down in here. And this is gonna kind of act like its own little grunge piece, you know, something that, um, actually I think I'm gonna change that so that's a little thinner. There we go, I like that better. Something that's a, a background filler. So something about like that. Then let me figure out my color arrangement here. There we go. That's what I like. It's about about like that. This house is going to sit up. Okay. I think I'm going to set that house about like such. And I am going to attach that with dimensionals. I really like how this house turned out. Hmm. Here we go. Yeah, I'm going to move it over more, a little centered like that. And then I'm going to use a mini glue dot to attach. poinsettia, the, a couple of the poinsettias. So a couple mini glue dots. I'm going to aim for, let's see, a 
center and a little bottom there towards the bottom. So center and then a little bit below the center. So about like that. Mm, I'm going to need to remember I have a little perimeter. Yep, so I can go off about an eighth of an inch in any direction and still be on the, on the card. So there's number one. Do the same thing with this one. Okay, what's missing? Oh, none of my glue dots actually stuck. That makes for a harder situation. There we go. Now they are. Let's try that again. So I'm going to create a little layered effect. Let's see, only an eighth of an inch. There we go. This one is going to get put on with dimensionals. And I'm going to be putting some greenery in here, and it's going to be coming out from behind the house. Um, I also have a couple of sets of berries to set in here as well. So. I'm going to go ahead and attach this using a couple of dimensionals. One dimensional or two. Mm, I almost wish I had another. I, I could cut another poinsettia. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stack my dimensional here. And... I'm going to just do something like that. Now I'm going to start filling in with berries and greenery next. And yes, I know I glued that down, but I'm still going to be able to. All right, so some of these bigger leaves, I'm going to cut off the stem because poinsettias don't normally have branches sticking out, right? So I'm going to just snip that off and do some of this kind of thing. I think the first one I'm going to do, though, is going to fill in this gap over here. Well, maybe. There we go. So, yes, yeah, first, yeah, see, okay. I like that. So I'm going to do that to three of these for starters. Gonna grab a mini glue dot. Actually, I'm probably gonna grab two. I'm gonna put them on the back of the leaves instead of trying to put them on the stem. So I'm gonna go right back in here. That looks very nice. And let's see. If I am going to set a 
These are going two different directions. So there we go. Okay, so this one looks better here. And this one will probably look great right here. I am of the opinion. There we are, there's one. And let's see if I can get this in a spot that hides my cut. Well, that's kind of nice, actually. Not too bad. Okay, then I have berries. So I can add berries and another piece of greenery if I so desire. Let's see. Just figuring it out. If I were to put that in there, and then the berries, I am really tempted to put one set of berries back there. I on purpose only wanted two sets of berries. I just need to figure out their placement, perfect placement. Okay, that looks pretty good there. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna go ahead and insert that one. Yeah. making a mess. Not a mess, but I'm... A little bit of a challenge, shall we say that? All right, I like that. Now, let's add some other greenery. I do like having greenery come out from behind the house. Again, I'm gonna take off those little branch looking pieces. We do have another set of big, bigger leaves back here too. Okay, so maybe before I figure out exactly where these pieces are, I should stamp my sentiment and make sure I know where that's sitting. Oh, that could actually maybe even sit down here. Hmm. 
Well, we're about to figure it out. I th I'm thinking that this is going to get stamped in real red, the color of the berries, which is why I only did two sets of berries instead of three. Here is the Merry Christmas. Oh, put my finger right in the ink. There we go. That looks nice. And that looks nice right there too. So that I'm going to go ahead and attach right now with some dimensionals, bigger dimensionals, <coughs> excuse me, and let's see, I want it to sit above the frame. So I might have to put two layers of dimensionals on there to make that work, but I'm willing to do that. I personally love layering my dimensionals. Let's see, what else can I talk to you about? Um, let's see, kids went back to school. My, one of my granddaughters, my daughter posted a picture of my granddaughter starting at the her first day at that school and then her first last day or her last first day at the same school oh i'm crooked i'm crooked i'm crooked there we go i'm going to try not to hit the camera as i there we go Whew, i got it um anyway so that was, of course, a tearjerker seeing uh, pre-K to eighth grade. Holy moly. I feel like I need some greenery right in the front of this house. And I'm trying to decide if I'm going to frame it, how I'm going to frame it. Or maybe it should be coming up the sides of the house. So... Oh yeah, I like that. Let's see if you like this too. Might have to use adhesive. As it's a smaller spot than my mini glue dot. A lot of people are busy now. Busy, busy, busy. Now with the kids back in school. People are getting back into routines and such. Hmm. Why doesn't that look like I thought it was going to look like? I'm going to pull that back out. cut off the wrong piece. And I've been playing around with my schedule for Thursdays, trying to figure out the best time. and have definitely had a hard time figuring that out. Well, that's kind of nice. That kind of warmly frames it, doesn't it? There we go, all right. 
I don't love how the house sits on the wood ring, but I don't dislike it either. So I am going to go ahead and attach this right here and do the same on the other side because I have a mirroring piece right there. We'll go right there. And then I've got a little greenery and berries to go on the edge of the Merry Christmas, and I've got a bow that I will put on here, just out of linen thread. Right, there's that. Then, I am going to trim this branch off and I'm going to put the berries on here like such and stick it off to the one side I think I think that's what I'm doing I liked it when I first laid it on there. Now it kind of looks like cherries when I do that, so now I'm not as not as sure that that's what I want to do. Oh, I know. Well, that's where I'll put my bow. That's where I will put the linen thread bow. Close up this red ink. And then put the bow there. Gosh, I'm not 100% in love with that, but... But at some point I have to quit fussing with it, right? Actually, I kind of like that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that for sure. This is the one that needed the most... Um, attention. The other th two cards are a bit better set up. Okay, so there is that. Now, I could do my bow right here. Let me do a little, see if I can get my thread I'm going to do a double bow just to take up a little bit more space I have a bit of a void right there so I want to fill that in I think I just heard my sweetheart get home There we go. And this could be nice right here. Just on the edge of the, matter of fact, I think that is what I like. I'm going to go ahead and just cut off these tails. Grab myself a mini glue dot.
right on the middle of the back of that bow. So, let's see. So I can either put it down in here in the flowers or I can put it over here in the corner of the house. And I think that's where I'm gonna put it is in the corner of the house to kind of fill up some space. And get that tie out from under there. There we go. I actually kind of like that. All right, so now I'm going to attach this to my card front using dimensionals. Oh my gosh, everybody. What do you think? Do you like that? That's that's pretty sharp looking. Even though that house, originally I thought it should have been a little bit lower. I think it kind of turned out just fine. So, hi, sweetheart. So we are going to add plenty of dimensionals to the back of this to lift up this card. I'm going to use my take your pick tool to take those papers off. That might have sounded very um, ex exa um, extravagant that we like to rent a place that we can have a kitchen in. But I have, I'm celiac, and it is not easy to go out to find some place to eat when <laughs> you have the um, food restrictions that I do. So that is a nice looking card. Okay, well, all that fussing was worth it. Look at that, that's beautiful. All right, I'm going to just set this aside and get started on the next card because I spent a little bit longer on this one than I probably should have. And I don't wanna lose your attention. I can set my red stamps out of the way. I'm double checking, don't need these. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna have to clean up just a little bit and get ready for the next card. The next card is an anniversary card. And I will need, just double checking here, my colors. set it put away. Merry Christmas can be put away because I'm going to need this for the anniversary. I'm just getting that out now. So did you know that with the photopolymer, you, you know, you can bend them into any position, or not any, but just about any position that you want. So if you want to make sure that they're straight, when you take them out of the, this one is sticky, uh, I haven't used it before, so it still has the um, finish on it from the manufacturer. Lay it down and let it relax into its natural position. Take your block and pick it up that way, and that should be, that is not straight. That is completely opposite of what I just told you. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to clean it off because it's really sticky. And... There, that should be better now. So I should be able to set it down and pick it up. And that should be straight. I don't know, doesn't look it. Doesn't look it to me. I think I'm gonna straighten it up. <laughs> that is not what I just said to you, is it? Hmm. Might have to grab some grid paper and put that on there to straighten that out. Okay, so there's my anniversary. I need the house again. I don't need the berries, but I do need the heart. Oh, I guess I told you I only had to cut out the um, house, but I do need to cut out the heart as well. Okay. 
So we're gonna set card number one aside and pull out card number two. Now for this one, instead of using basic white, I'm using very vanilla. Same dimensions, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Let's go ahead and burnish that. I am using the thick cardstock, not the lighter weight or standard weight cardstock. Um, same thing with the basic white. I want a card base that has substance. There we go. I wanted this warmer color. I'm using more natural tones for this one, and I think you might like this. I think it's very rich looking. Um, other than the, the Blushing Bride, it's all very, and even the Blushing Bride with these browns is very, um, is lovely. So I'm, I'm pairing Early Espresso with the Very Vanilla. So this is my matte layer. This will be my card front. And then I've got this fun strip. Look at what I did with that embossing folder. I just took a strip and I centered in between those different um, rings to get this effect. Set this out of the way. Okay, and like I said, I'm gonna use that some of that green again. So I've already die cut those pieces. I've already strip cut for my happy anniversary. Okay, so I am gonna set these pieces aside and why do I feel like I'm forgetting something? If it seems like I'm delaying, I am. I'm gonna pull my little book back out with have my design in it. I don't see anything missing. Okay. So I am going to stamp the house and then I'm gonna stamp two hearts. So I am going to, for this house, I am going to change up the colors a little bit, although I really like what that one looked like and so I'm tempted to not change. Um, you know, I think it would do me well to stay with the same colors because I see how well it worked over there. So I'm going to use soft suede for the house and I'm going to use early espresso for the roof. And I'm stamping right on that very vanilla. So previously I was stamping on basic white. Okay, I want this. There we go. So soft suede. And early espresso. And I'm looking through to make sure I'm getting the coverage on my stamp that I want. And... Ooh, that one might be crooked. I might have to do that again. Ah, darn it. I got so lucky with my first one. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and stamp the roof first on the second one. Which looks perfect and come back in and fill in the house portion. Ooh. That looks like nice coverage. Well, maybe that was a happy accident then. Oh, 
Oh, man. Let's see. Good thing I've got more than one scrap here. For some reason I'm not lining that up. Well, I know why. We all know why. It's because when I craft when I'm by myself, I can craft right in front of me. But when I'm on camera, I can't put my head right over the top of the stamp. So that's why that happens. Let's, let's all hope that third time's a charm, huh? Does that happen to anybody else? Okay, let's see. I'm pulling that closer to me, hoping that I can get a better... stamp. I've got a feeling I'm off, but... Oh, man. If I had soft suede pencil, I could go in and fill that in. And I hope that was, yeah, early espresso. Okay, friends, we're doing this one more time. And if this doesn't work, then I'm going to go with one of the stamps that have been done. One of the houses is going to get cut. Does anybody believe me? That's the one we're going with, right there. That's the straightest out of all of them. That looks pretty good, okay. But now I need to get into my scrap bin. Oh, I've got, actually I've got a piece right over here next to me. And I need to stamp a couple of those hearts. So first, let me discard the house that I'm not going to fussy cut and get rid of those other two and now I need to stamp two little hearts now one of the things I want to tell you about blushing bride blushing bride for some reason it has um, some pigments in it that sometimes separate and if I were to just take this off the shelf and try to stamp with it my hearts might look a little bit brown but if I take this off the shelf and I take the back of a plastic spoon and I reactivate those inks by spreading my spoon back and forth over it just like this, I'll go one direction and then I'll go another direction. I have remixed those inks and I will get a much truer color to Blushing Bride now. And let me show you what I mean. You, well, you can even see it on the spoon. See, it's much, much truer. And I just clean that spoon off with my um, Stampin' Chamois, or Simply Chamois. Here's my heart. I just need a couple of these. And see, I got a very, very nice shade of Blushing Bride, and that's even on very vanilla. If I had, well, I do have a piece of white scrap right here I can show you. And look at how nice that turned out. So if you ever take one of your, your ink pads and you stamp something and go, oh my gosh, that is not the right color, take the back of a plastic spoon or take an expired gift card and reactivate your ink very much the way that I just showed you how to do and you will be a very happy camper with your ink. All right, let me set that aside. Close up that beautiful blushing bride that I just talked about. And now I can fussy cut these three items. Quick, quick, quick. And so the, the hint for fussy cutting is to keep your scissors in one location 
and move the paper. And if you are probably going to date myself when I say this, but if you in school ever drew bubbles around your name, did you ever do that? You write your name and then you would take a pencil or a pen and draw a bubble around it. Well, when I was in school, you would draw a bubble and then you would draw another bubble and then you would draw another bubble because we had those pens that you could change the inks on just by clicking the top. Yep, I just dated myself. Ah. Anyway, that's how you're going to cut this. Is you're you're picturing that bubble, that little perimeter, and don't nobody's going to see it. You don't need to cut right up to the stamped image. You are going to leave a little bit of white, or in this case, very vanilla, right around that image. And once you attach this and you create your your focal point on your card, no one's going to see that. No one is going to see that perimeter. All right, hearts are done. Let's do that house. I'm trying to decide if I want to use a blending brush behind where this house is going to sit, or if I'm just going to be happy with the greenery. I think I'm just going to be happy with the greenery because this actually overlaps this gorgeous piece that's going to lay on here. So there will be no face or no YouTube live um, on Monday. That's the day that my husband and I are returning from our vacation. I may try to um, post a project, but I won't do a, a video. And then next Thursday, a week from today, I will do another YouTube Live. I, oh, let's see, I've got my calendar right here next to me. I'm going to be using the Bewitching bundle. So that is the bundle that has the witch's hat and the fun witch's legs and shoes. It's got a couple of different hats. Anyway, that's the one I'm going to do and I'll be featuring three cards or projects. Projects, let's call them projects because one of them is not a card. Um, I'll be featuring three projects using that bundle. All right, and there's our house. Okay, so fun, 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 here we go. I guess I should go ahead and stamp this. And I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do this in early espresso. I'm not gonna try to get all funky fancy with my ink color here. Man, I technically could have gone with a skinnier piece of cardstock, but for my strip cut. Well, that's not, that's not bad. I'm going to do another one on the other end, I think. And see which one I like better. I like the first one best. Just going to do a snip just like that. Close this up and mostly it's assembly of this card now and the last one is mostly assembly as well. Okay so I am going to adhere. So this is our matte layer. This is our 
Let me move this out of the way so you can actually see this better. Oops, I put, I put it right back, silly me. Um, I'm going to center the card front, which is the very vanilla layer, on top of the early espresso layer. And you'll see in a moment why I'm doing that. A lot of times I'll create my card front and then put my matte layer on, but in this case, this lines up with those lines. So I need to do it ahead. And I like to use, goodness gracious, I like to use the um, multi-purpose adhesive. Sorry, I started to talk and then I stopped because I saw that I got a couple of thick areas. There we go, all right. So I'm adhering the, oh, anyway, I was saying that I like to use the multi-purpose adhesive because it gives me time to wiggle things into place. So, like, like that. I'm gonna turn that over and give that a nice little push. Now, this piece that I embossed, notice that it overlaps the very vanilla and it lines up with the top and the bottom of the uh, matte layer. And that looks sharp. I think it looks sharp. I am going to adhere that down. Oh, come on. Come on. Do, 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 do. I don't know what has happened, but I'm guessing something has happened because I hear that my husband already has the news on. Oh, the world that we live in right now is just full of craziness. But you know what? I had a visitor this morning that reminded me for all the crazy that we hear on the news, there's lots of crazy, we, there's lots of not crazy. There's lots of beautiful things that we don't hear about. She mentioned that because I told her about a, a beautiful scenario that I witnessed um, some time ago that left a beautiful impression on my heart. And she was like, you know what? That's the stuff that should be in the news. <laughs> and I agree with her. Okay. And I think I lined that up very nicely. Now. I am going to take some of my linen thread and I am going to wrap it around here like this. And I am going to use my scotch tape, which I realized is sitting in the other room. It's only sitting about 10 feet from me. One moment. There we go. I like to use scotch tape to adhere my things. It, use something that's being attached to the back. That's just my personal preference. So I am going to wrap this around three times. I'm going to attach one end down first. And then I'm going to kind of straighten it out a little bit, about just like that. I am going to trim that thread and then grab a piece of scotch tape. I am not promoting scotch tape. It's just the brand that I happen to purchase. Here we go. All right. 
This is going to sit on the card base. So this is basically what we're looking at. I want to, I think I want my house over the top of the ribbon or over the, the thread. Probably going to do something like that. And I have all these beautiful green pieces that I want to use. So basically I am going to attach a bunch of greenery coming off of the sides of the house. Hey John, did something happen in the news because um, my phone has kind of been blowing up while I've been on this? You don't know? Okay. Okay. Well, he didn't know, so we don't, we still don't know yet. And maybe, maybe nothing has happened and maybe it's just a coincidence that. Okay, I got my fingers all flustered up here, so I need to unfluster my fingers. I know that I want this to straddle here. I'm gonna use one set of dimensionals one layer of dimensionals, one layer top, one layer bottom. So one like this and one like this. And I'm going to straddle. About like that. Now that gives me some room to add greenery. Oh, I'm kind of liking that. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So I've got one, some, some pieces that go this direction and some pieces that go this direction. So I just need to take a peek at what I have here. I'll do that and that. All right, this goes flip, flip. I don't want to overthink this. I just want to I think I'm going to put the bigger leaf behind and the smaller leaf on top, maybe. I don't like the bigger leaf as much as I like the smaller one. So maybe that's my answer. And put this one under as well. But then I need some. Okay, I'm just gonna make this one match. Okay, I have a plan. On this one, I'm going to take off that little pointy branch. I am going to use my mini blue dots right here. I'm going to put behind the leaves, whoops. Now the reason I'm using a mini glue dot is if I put glue glue on this and I go to put it underneath this ribbon, it's going to cause me a little bit of grief. So there is that. This Ringed with Nature, I think, was a bit of a sleeper. I, I did not realize that it was going to be, that I was gonna like it as much as I do. All 
All right, so there is the first layer and then second layer. This one I took off the pointy branch. This one I left it on. So this one I'm going to take it off. that one up a little bit. I'm going to have to be careful putting it down. So I'm going to slide this in. See if I can get that in there. Oh, there we go. Okay, one more. This one I'm going to leave that little pointy branch. And you know, I think this one I should have rotated out a little bit or rotated in one of the two. There we go. There we go. That's better. All right. Now, this one I can add the mini glue dots. Sometimes these pieces get so little and I don't know if you've all been on here before when I've talked about um, my size. I am a I am a tall woman of stature and I have feet and hands to match. And so sometimes these little dinky pieces are really a bit of a booger for me. I mean, here's a card and there's my hand. So that just kind of gives you an indication of, of my, um, my stature. Okay, so I can put these down. Here, I'm kind of happy with how that's turning out. Set these, I don't think I'm gonna need more greenery. I'm gonna probably put my happy anniversary like right there at the base of the house. And I'm going to attach a couple of hearts like this on dimensionals. So I'm just going to go ahead and put those on dimensionals right now. We're almost done with the front of this card. Oop, got to use smaller dimensionals. Oh, come on. Can't feel it. There it is. So I'm going to put one on the early espresso side. I'm going to put one on the very vanilla side. It's very unusual for me to leave a piece not colored or uh, embossed or something but I really think that this plays well this time. I'm going to use some dimensionals to um, set this right here, and then I'm gonna find where I wanna put my bow, my linen thread bow. Okay, this is big enough. Let's see, I think I can use standard size here. I think that looks nice. Of course, I happen to love these colors in general. Not, not straight yet. Uh-oh. Well, that might indicate where my bow is going to go if I have to make something look straight. I'm going to go ahead and attach this to my 
card front. Wow, I'm really glad my windows are closed. I just heard the sprinklers come on. They usually come on in the middle of the night. I Under the window in this room, I have my paper stock. And I kind of have a heart attack every time I hear the sprinklers come on. All right, here we go, here we go. So in Lincoln City, where we're going to be going on vacation, they have a program called Finders Keepers. Have you heard of it? And what it is, is so they're really well known for their um, art, their glass art down there, glass blowing and that sort of thing. And they have a program where they hide glass floats, artisan glass floats. And if you find it, you get to keep it. And you, they all come numbered, and you register your, your float, and they send you a um, letter of authenticity. My husband and I have actually found two. I found one on our fifth anniversary, and he found one on our 10th anniversary. So that was rather cool. All right, we're going to go with another double bow. So, and we've been lots of times where we don't find one at all, and we don't even see anybody find one, but that's okay. The magic is in looking together. It's fun. You get up early morning, and I found mine in late afternoon. We found his, or he found his in early morning. So much fun. All right, so... Do, 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 do. Well, that, did, that didn't look bad on the corner of the house. If I was going to put it here, it would need to be maybe a little smaller. The reason I was even looking to put it here is I'm not thrilled with how this is laying, but it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. It's just me being picky. So that could go there, and that's okay but I think I like this best nah I really want it on the actual tie so I think I am going to put it right there so taking this trimming I might need to trim it more I should trim it more so it didn't hang so much over the anniversary, word anniversary. I'm gonna grab a mini glue dot. And my friends, we are, oh, you know what? This would have been cute with, um, hmm. Let me reach behind me and grab some matte dots. I just grabbed a big old handful of my gems here. I have some off-white colored. Yeah, I don't don't want anything sparkly. I think I'll use these. Now these that are colored, that's where I was. Um, custom coloring for I don't, one of my projects. Which ones I'm not sure, don't remember. Let's see, let's throw, let's throw one of those here. So um, these matte, classic matte dots come in white, there's an off-white, there's gray, and then there's black. we go that's cute 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 okay we now have two of three cards done and the last one is there's no fussy cutting 
I bet that made you happy to hear. So here's the two cards we have so far, and I told you at the beginning that our common denominator was number one, the stamp set and, and dies, but number two, and the um, embossing folder, but number two, the color early espresso and the garden green. Clean up my area. Matter of fact, the only thing to be stamped is the sentiment. And I will show you that for these rings, these wood rings, I did something slightly different than I did with the previous ones, and I'll show you what I did. Okay, I've got a lot of little bits and pieces here. So this one we have acorns and greenery and wood slices and such. Okay. I can move the pink aside. And I think this is where I was thinking that I might use a blending brush and use apply just a little bit of green Gosh, you know, I wonder if I should just use crumb cake instead. I'm gonna use crumb cake. And I'm just creating a little bit of color back here. It's, there's actually gonna be a couple of big wood slices and some acorns and stuff, but I'm just gonna make sure that we don't end up with any big white spots. So not adding a lot, just adding a little bit of visual interest. What it'll do, what this does is it creates lift to whatever I put on top of it. It lifts it up. And this wasn't even a, a beautiful job, but it's gonna be okay because there's gonna be so much layered on top. Okay, that's good. Okay, I'm gonna separate out my little bits and pieces here. I've got some acorn bottoms and some acorn tops. Make sure everything got flipped over the right way because the dies, can you see that? There's some little hash marks. Let's see, that's not looking like it wants to focus, does it? You're gonna have to trust me. The dies have little hash marks in them. So it looks like the top of an acorn. Okay, so what I did different, so this is the same wood piece like I showed you at the beginning of the video about how I used the um, hybrid folder to emboss and cut at the same time. And I did the same thing with this piece, except with this piece, I had um, applied an ink to the inside of the embossing folder. These originally cut out the same size as these, but then there is another set of dies. So here's the Here's the big one that works with the embossing folder. Then there are these smaller ones that you can cut something down with. And that's what I used to create the smaller inner rings. And then there are these pieces that look like, they look like a little star and they create what looks like a dried wood split. You see that? So. These look slightly different than the very first one that I showed you. Let's see if I can put this back together again without losing anything. I have an order in for more magnet sheets to hold my dies. Okay, set that back aside. 
So I am going to go ahead and adhere these to each other. And I just need a little ring of adhesive. It's a brand new bottle of glue and I'm it's, I'm having a hard time getting it out because I'm not pressing very hard because I know as soon as I press very hard, I am gonna have a mess. And see how, oops. Oh, let me turn that around. I've had it going the wrong direction. There we go. Now it fits just right. You see that? You like it? I like it. I like how that looks. Do the same thing with this one. So this one's a couple of wood slices and some acorns and some greenery. There we go. All right. So, let me get my direction going here. So one of these is going to get adhered flat down. Uh, actually, I should probably use some mini glue dots behind the one that's going on the bottom and then dimensionals on the one that's above it. Make sure that I'm figuring out how I want this to lay. Okay, I am going to adhere this to my matte layer. And then I'm going to determine the exact location of my wood layers. Then I am going, before I attach the wood layers, I'm going to attach my linen thread. that. Give that a nice little squish. Squish, squish, squish. Okay. So now I need to determine if I want, I kind of want this layer on the bottom and this one on the top. And I'm trying to decide if I have a good reason for deciding that. Oh, nope. I like that better right there. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this one with mini glue dots. I'm going to put my linen thread on, and then I'm going to attach this one with dimensionals. So this is going to sit in, kind of in this corner a little bit, and this one's gonna sit a little bit farther down in this corner. That's gonna give me room to apply a couple acorns here and a few acorns here and some greenery, okay? Get your mini glue dots. And the mini glue dots are quite strong. Oh, they're so strong. Let's try that again. So I have three on there. And I'm going to do that just like that. And the reason I did it this way is I wanted to be able to stick some greenery under here after I have attached a few other items. Okay, Whew, I got worried there for a second. I thought, oh no, that's straight up and down. <laughs> Not what I wanted. Okay. So, linen thread. I'm gonna wrap it around three times. I'm gonna use my scotch tape, just like I did last time. So 
So attached. And one, two, three. And I'm going to kind of push them together so they look a little bit more rope-like than thread-like. Alright, so now I'm ready to um, attach my second piece of wood slice. I think I'm going to put a dimensional down right around in here, another one here, and another one here. So let's see if I'm able to pull that off the way that I think I am. So I wanted one here. one here and one here. Now I'm going to see if I can... Yep, uh, oh, that's going to bend that rope just a little bit, but um, that helps me figure out where my placement needs to be as far as my leaves and stuff go, so that's okay. Taking off those dimensional backs. So anyway, the um, finder's keepers that I was talking about, that's actually really precious to my husband and I. There we go. That looks nice. So now I'm going to start adhering my acorn tops to my acorns. Oh, you know what, before I do that, I actually was gonna, I'm sorry, big noise. I'm gonna use my sop suede and a sponge dauber to create um, a little bit of color around the edges of the acorns. So it doesn't need to be a ton, doesn't need to be perfect, but it's going to make it um, appear to have more dimension. And only takes a second to do. It just kind of makes it look a little bit more rounded, creates that kind of shadowy effect. Now these acorns I cut out of the craft paper. I thought about using Cajun Craze which is a bit more red. I thought about using crumb cake, which is a bit more pale. I thought about using soft suede. I, I don't know, it just, that's what I was using on my wood rings. So I decided to pull out the craft paper, which has a slightly redder tone, but is still quite neutral. And then I'm using early espresso on the acorn tops. So soft suede is certainly not a match, but it is a nice complementary tone. There we go. Now all five of our acorns have been enhanced. 
So I'm going back and forth trying to decide which uh, sentiment I want to use on this card, and I think I'm going to go with thinking of you. But the other option that I had was love and warmth. Um, yeah, so we'll see. Okay, so now I'm going to... adhere and there's not a lot of room there to adhere but can you see that pretty little acorn so I need to just put a couple little dots of adhesive across this base right here and manually line that up and look at that beautiful little acorn that we have. It looks like I got a little bit of adhesive. I'm holding on to it because I see a little bit of adhesive on the back and a little bit of adhesive on the front. And I don't want to set it down and have it stick. Okay, I think I've got it cleaned up off the front, so I'm just going to flip that over for a second. But look at how, how cute this is going to be, right? We're going to have a couple acorns up here and three acorns down here need to decide where I'm going to put that sentiment. Thinking of you right here. I'm going to fussy cut it. Oh, I lied to you earlier, didn't I? I told you I, <laughs> I, told you I was done fussy cutting. <laughs> uh, you caught me. Let's see. Maybe if I do it this way. Ooh, I put that way up there. They really didn't give us a lot of room here to uh, line these up. And I don't know, maybe their intention was for us to glue them down one on top of the other. I don't know. but that's not gonna work for my purposes, so. That one looks pretty good. Two more to go. I'm really excited about going to the Stampin' Up! convention in November. I just love the speakers. And I just love how Stampin' Up! celebrates the stampers or demonstrators. They celebrate everybody. They uplift absolutely everybody. It's amazing. They're such a great company. I love being associated with them. Some of these are looking like their tops are way too wide, which means I've got them glued way too low, but... A little bit better. One more. So I... Oh, ho, ho, Messy, messy, messy. So I thought I would stamp the sentiment on the craft paper. I've got scrap craft paper here. Let's see, can I see that? Not centered, that's why it looks, whoops. That's 
why it's looking funny. Okay, now it's stuck to my finger more than it's sticking to itself. There we go. All right, I now have acorns. So, thinking that I would like the bigger branches. The card base for this card, by the way, is the same as the last two cards. Eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Gonna burnish that real quick. Um, I think I want to go ahead and attach this to this so that I can see how much room I have for working. Nope, I think I just hit the camera with my head. My apologies if I made you wiggle. Okay. Here we go. So I want to put a couple pieces of greenery down here and up here. And then I want to put Now remember, there's going to be acorns on top of this. Oh, there we go. I like, kind of liking that. Let's move this over. Uh, I got a little, I'm gonna wipe off my hands. Hold on. There we go, that's better. I uh, got some of that adhesive on my hands so everything was sticking. Okay, so that's it. I like that kind of look on our greenery. So then I just see a little bit of adhesive. Hold on. I'm grabbing rubber eraser that will just pick that adhesive right up. Here we go. So I can put a couple of acorns up here. And then a few acorns down here. You see where I'm going with that? Looks pretty good, doesn't it? So I'm going to go ahead and attach those first four pieces of greenery. Going to use a little bit of liquid adhesive. Not too much, just a little bit. I need to put enough on there that when I layer the acorns, that we're in good shape. Oh, I kind of like that. So the acorns make a little bit more sense to have some sticks kind of sticking out. I just saw my time and I am over two hours, my friends. And my apologies.
sentiment will be stamped in early espresso, so it will stand out nicely. Some of the acorns will get applied with dimensionals. There we go. Okay, now. get more on me. Straightening out my back. All right, dimensionals on the back of these acorns. So I'm going to use a dimensional on the back of one and then I will slide the other one in kind of underneath. So that one's sitting on top. And then this one's kind of sitting underneath. See that? And then over here, Now we want to plan these really carefully. So So this one should face well maybe this one can sit right here. Yes. So another dimensional So this one's going to sit up here, like that. And then these two can sit down a little bit lower. And they're going to, one will be laying flat, the other one will be, will be on a dimensional. So this one will lay flat, this one will be on a dimensional, like this. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. We're almost there. We will apply these and then stamp that sentiment and tie a bow. So one acorn and another acorn. There. Now, isn't that sharp looking? Okay, I'd say we're about done with the greenery. I can push all that to one side. I can stamp. I didn't get out my new sentiment, did I? Let me do that. Thinking of you. fit barely yeah I'm gonna clean that off real quick it felt a little sticky it's kind of the manufacturers finishing on it I'm going to use the early espresso Thinking of you. I'm 
Okay, so I'm going to fussy cut this now. And just kind of wiggling around. And I hope I didn't get too close to the ink. I might have, but we'll see. Hmm, I hear my husband putting away the dishes. Not a sound I hear all the time. He just got home from work, so I wouldn't expect that from him. So my bubble is a little on the skimpy side compared to what I told you before, but I'm going to be on white paper, so I think I'm going to get away with it. I'm going to be surprised if I don't get away with it. I liked the warmth of this paper, and having used it on the acorns, I thought, you know, that would make a nice background for my sentiment on here. Let's see if I'm right. Oh yeah, that's gonna look nice, I think. Thinking of you, whether I overlap it or I put it down here. Thinking I might put it right in the middle of that woodcut. Okay, on the home stretch. So you see how I'm moving the paper and not the scissors? It really is the secret, my friends. All right, here's our sentiment. Hmm. Hmm, yeah, it's too dark, isn't it? Well, that's unfortunate. Okay, I've got white right here. I can restamp it and cut. Sorry about that. So close to done, too. And I, my head just hit the, that's going to be better. That's going to be, I should have known better. I just really love that paper a lot. Okay, quickie quickie here. Here we go. Let's see, what else can I tell you? So what do you think? Do you like, do you like this ringed with nature? I hope. It's just really so much more versatile than I had originally thought. I really think it was a sleeper in the catalog to begin with. Or in my, it didn't catch my eye. Hmm. Something's going on out there.
so much better, isn't it? Should have started with white. What I found, and this is just my personal preference, and it could be because I don't have the right um, punches for labels and stuff like that. I haven't been in love with some of my strip cuts and stuff for um, applying on my cards. I haven't liked them with the shapes of the things that have been on my cards. So that's why the fussy cutting There we go. A couple spots here I could have done just slightly better. There. So this could either, well, actually that looks pretty good overlaid like that. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. Okay, so the small dimensionals. Oh, come on. That's one of my my things is I can't stand anything stuck to my fingernails. It's a, it's a sensitivity. It's a tactile thing. Anyway, so like if scotch tape or something like that gets on my fingernails, it drives me wild. Absolutely nutso. We all have something. That's mine. Oh, do I need two? I guess I need two on there. There. That looks nice. Now I'm gonna put a bow right there. I'm also going to attach this to our card front. We're almost done, friends. Thank you for sticking it out with me. Did you know that you could cut your dimensional frame apart and use those as well? Yep. Nothing needs to go to waste. That one is peeling for some reason. There we go. And one more. <clears throat> Add this and a bow and we're done. didn't get stuck down. There we go. All right, now a bow.
And this will go right in here, and that will look awesome. mini glue dot. And there we go. Okay, my friends, we now have three cards. Let me show those to you. Get a few of these other bits and pieces out of the way. So here are the three cards that we've made today. So, my friends, I hope that you like that. hope you've enjoyed this demonstration. I thank you for joining me. I will update the um, description to include the blog post that will have all of the product details, um, as well as a link to my online store. Thank you again for joining me. Have a wonderful weekend. Great big hugs.